are rolling. Speed. Once again, black smoke. For two days, the conclave of cardinals locked behind the doors of the Sistine Chapel have attempted to elect a pope. And their only link with the outside world, that thin column of smoke that rises from the stove in which each ballot is burned. A ten times, black smoke has risen, no verdict. And each time, the crowd standing vigil prays that next time, white smoke will billow forth. And the traditional cry, Habamus Papam, we have a pope, will be heard here and throughout the entire Catholic world. This is Cleet Roberts, Vatican City, Rome. <laughs> Uh, no more for me. I want to be able to see the white smoke when it shows. How much longer do you think, Cleve? Well, Joe, when they uh, elected Pope Benedict XIV, it took 255 ballots. Deadlock? Looks like neither the conservatives or the liberals have enough votes. Sooner or later, they'll have to go with a compromise. An interim pope, uh, most likely, an old man who can be counted on to do nothing. And then, some years later, when he passes on, he'll hold another election and put in a strong pope. Who's the best bet for the interim pope? Uh, Roncalli. Angelo Cardinal Roncalli, the patriarch of Venice. He's popular, easygoing, and he's 77. 77 years old? If they elect a man that old, they will have a do-nothing interim pope. Well, maybe. Maybe not. You sound as if you know Ron Kelly. Well, I do know one story about him. Well, Joe, tell us. Well, during World War II, he was apostolic delegate to Turkey, kind of an ambassador from the pope. I think there were less than 20,000 Catholics in the country at the time. Not a very challenging job for a man who'd given almost 40 years to the church. take whatever food we can spare to Mrs. Kramer. Tommaso has the address. Angelo, you're late for your appointment. My dear sister, Mrs. Kramer's husband is missing in action. Her two small children will not starve. Tommaso... My uh, dear brother, your appointment is waiting for you in the study. Rabbi Herzog and his friends. Herzog. And if you don't go to them soon, they will starve. And I doubt that all our extra food... Which you gave away two days ago... Would help. <clears throat> Why? Grace. Oh, the dietary laws. Difficult problem. Isaac. Angelo. You remember Monsignor Ryan? Oh, of Rabbi. Course, of course. Archbishop Roncalli, Monsignor Ryan, may I present Rachel Friedman? Hello. And Melach Bensvi. How do you do? May I 
make amends for being late by offering you some refreshments. Oh, no, 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 that will not be necessary. We are very grateful that you can spare us your time knowing your schedule. Oh, please be seated. Be seated. Isaac. How can I help you? Angelo. I rushed here from Jerusalem on a desperate mission. Melech here is captain of the vessel Laro. This small boat carries a most precious cargo. 647 Jewish children. Rachel. The children, they were either orphans or were forcibly and tragically separated from their parents. They range in age from 6 to 14. For the last six months, we've smuggled them out of camps in Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Germany. When we finally got them on La Roe and out to sea, well, we thought our problems were over. Where were you taking them? Israel. Eretz, Israel. But the British. The humane protectors for Palestine discovered us making for Haifa and refused us entry. But why? How could they do that? They're entry quota laws. They're enforcing them. Where else in the Mediterranean could we go but here? These two. It is their courage that has kept the children alive and free these last months. At times, I think, it was only the children's faith that kept us going. You brought each other to safety. Apparently not. Your Excellency, pending the outcome of discussions with the country from which the ship last sailed... Nazi Germany. The Turkish government refuses to grant the children asylum. The Turkish government? What reason do they give? The children have no papers. Hundreds of people come into this country without papers and have stayed. There is one difference. These are Jews without papers. Angelo, the Germans have made an issue with the government. They are demanding that the ship and everyone on it be surrendered so it can be returned to the port from which it sailed illegally. Surely the Turkish government would not agree to these Nazi demands. The foreign ministry has set Friday morning, two days from today, for the ship and the children to be surrendered. Then we must ask the Turkish government to allow the children to stay. No one in the government will see me. Representations have been made by the International Red Cross and to no avail. So, please call Foreign Minister Menemengiolo's office. I would like an immediate audience. Immediate, Your Grace. Tommaso, I was born of poor Italian farmers. You came from the land of the Blarney Stone. You, I know, will find the proper words that will make the minister happy to see me immediately. Now, we must organize our few parishes. I'm sure you need additional clothing and food. My sister Maria will give you all we have. Our biggest need is blankets. Our biggest need is asylum. The foreign minister is a man of humanity and honor. I am certain he will help. You've arranged clearances for all my Romanians. 
Thank you. This is more than I dared hope for. It was not an easy matter. Day after day, I bring you impossible problems, and you solve them so quietly. I do not know what I have done to deserve such friendship. <laughs> well, you are the only foreigner I have ever known who could pronounce my name without the flicker of an eye. Your name? I could turn your name into a litany. Uh, that will not be necessary. You've done so much for us. Now I must ask for one more favor. There is nothing I can do. Then you know why I am here. What you want, my friend, is impossible. Just persuade the president to see me. He will not see you. He says you are meddling in our political affairs once again. That is the last thing I would want. President Inono instructs me to read you this statement. In the matter of the ship Laro and its cargo... Its cargo? Its cargo is children. The ship sails under no recognized flag, has no legal registry. The passengers are without passports or any other acceptable papers. The German government claims the ship was pirated, submits documents that catalog the crimes committed by the fugitives, and demands their return. Under the circumstances, the Turkish government has no alternative but to meet that demand. The alternative would be to repudiate that demand and give these children the shelter of your neutrality. And risk the loss of that neutrality? No. The German authorities assume full responsibility for the ship Friday morning. Newman, come to the ship with me. Let us talk with Rabbi Herzog. It couldn't change anything. I'm sorry. Angelo. Be careful. Pray for me. In Islamic, of course. Jews? I guess that won't matter. friendship goes back many years. This feeling of Hitler's about the Jews, it consumes him. The invasion of England fails, he murders Jews. The Russians resist more stubbornly than he expected, he murders Jews. And no sane or reasonable protest by me or anyone else will change him. I am only asking you to help me save a shipload of children here, now, in Istanbul. It's out of my hands. You are the ranking German official in Turkey. Now, wait a minute. If you want to help the children, go and see Colonel Kroll, the Gestapo's ambassador to Turkey. Yeah, it's out of my hands. France. You cannot wash your hands clean so easily. Angelo, what do you expect of me? Now, really, I cannot influence the Gestapo. They despise me as much as I despise them. Surely, surely there must be others in Berlin who, like yourself, do not want the blood of all these innocent children on their conscience. Enlist their support. You will never have a better cause. Now do it, Franz. Do it for the children. Do it for yourself. Franz. I, uh, I will place a call to to Zoltz in the Berlin Foreign Office. It 
spiritu santi. He has the lungs of an Italian tenor. You've sung your aria, my friend, now. Pianissimo. Let Uncle Angelo have his turn, eh? There. Archipe vestem candidum immaculatum ante tribunal domini nostri, Jesu Christi, ut abias vitam eternum. Amen. Vade in pace, et dominus sit tecum. Amen. Excellency. Excellency, for Lucy, this medal, your blessing. Better than that. For Lucy, we shall send it to Rome. Your Excellency, my wife and I will be forever grateful for this honor. Mr. Minister, it is you who serve Portugal and your church so well. Who does honor to my chapel? I thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tommaso. Listen to him hit that high C. We may have baptized another Caruso. In only a few hours, you'll be in Rome. God willing and nothing interfering. <laughs> I'll pray for you, Tommaso. Eh? Thank you. I still think flying should be left to birds and angels. <laughs> Here is the letter for Cardinal Marioni. Be sure you hand it to him yourself. He is one man who might persuade the Holy Father to intervene personally. Of course, if Van Papen does manage to change Berlin's mind. For the sake of the children. We must hammer at every door. The rap to my knuckles are raw. If the door does open, Tommaso, be eloquent. Use all that Irish charm. God go with you. We have been asked by Rabbi Isaac Herzog to meet him here. We have supplies for the children. You may pass. The rabbi is aboard the ship. Thank you. again this afternoon. Could some of the older boys help unload the truck? We have food, clothing, and blankets. We will bring more later. Keep the condemned warm and healthy. Melach, childish petulance is a luxury we cannot afford. Young man, 
God will not abandon these children. I believe he will not. I know he will not. So while we wait for God's will to be done, we keep his children warm and fed. Please forgive him. Isaac, I am anxious to meet your precious cargo. Dog! Hello? Hello, the track. Thank you. Tell me your name. Your name. I am Angelo. Angelo. Can you say that? Angelo? Angelo. Excellent. Just excellent. Now, what is your name? I am Angelo. And you are? Joseph. Joseph. That's a marvelous name. Joseph. Joseph. Angelo. What is this? A very remarkable watch. Papa. Your papa's watch. Why, that's beautiful, Joseph. Just beautiful. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you. Thank you. I am Colonel Gunther Kroll, Geheime Staatspolizei. I've been looking forward to meeting the much beloved Archbishop Roncalli for some time now. Please sit down. I also have been looking forward to this meeting. The ambassador will be quite touched to hear that his archbishop was the first to pay his respects. Respects? Less than an hour ago, an attempt was made on Ambassador von Papen's life. An assassin? Yes. Fortunately, he escaped injury. Have you found who is responsible. Yes, a Russian, of course. The good Lord protected the ambassador. With the assistance of my agents. I shall convey your good wishes and your concern to His Excellency. I should prefer to see him myself. My dear Archbishop, that is quite impossible. He was badly shaken by the experience. He's going to leave Turkey, at least temporarily. 
Then I must make my plea to you. In the harbor, there is a shipload of children. I should have known that your humanitarian instincts would lead you to them. Colonel Crow, I implore you, let these children stay in Istanbul. My dear Archbishop, that, that decision is not mine to make. And you, of all people, should sympathize with my position. How is that? You're a servant of the church. You pledged your life to carrying out its orders unquestioningly. Now, you may not always understand why you are asked to do certain things, but you accept the wisdom of your superiors. Like you, I'm merely a servant, and I do what is required of me, unquestioningly. You send them back. You condemn them to death. My dear Archbishop, I condemn no one. I merely follow orders, right here and now. Later decisions will be made by high authority. And I'm sure for the good of the Third Reich. Now, if you will kindly can... excuse me. Auf Wiedersehen, Archbishop. Till we meet again. I will pray for you. Thank you. Excellency, the foreign minister called. He urgently asked that you come to the ministry as soon as possible. Well, thank you, Luigi. Please phone and tell them I'm leaving now. Angelo! Angelo! Our brother Alfredo, he's dying. Brother Mo, two days ago. They need you at home, Angelo. Go to the foreign ministry. They they will arrange for us to leave by airplane tonight. Your Excellency, the President has been contacted by Colonel Kroll with an official protest from Berlin. They state that your activities in this matter may be subversive. Subversive? Is it? Subversive to want to save those children? To future good relations between Germany and Turkey. I am instructed to remind you that you are in our country at the tolerance of the Turkish government. You have no official status here. Of that, I am well aware. Stop meddling or you'll be deported. Perhaps on the same ship as the children. Angelo, you've been able to accomplish a great deal in Turkey. Don't throw it all away. Angelo, you are out of your proper sphere, mixing religion and politics. Perhaps you can tell me, in this case, how they can be separated. Oh, I understand that you had to protest. To understand that I had to protest. I am pledged in my soul to protest, to meddle, to interfere, to subvert, to use any weapon possible to shield those children. Even to jeopardizing the neutrality of a country whose protection you have enjoyed for seven years. Newman, I love your country. The last thing I would want is to harm it or its people. Suppose I could arrange for the ship to go to another neutral port, Barcelona or Lisbon. 
Would your government cooperate? No country is going to accept more than 600 fugitives without papers. But if I could arrange it... Angelo, deporting you is not an idle threat. The papers are drawn up. I've seen them. my sympathies are with you, Excellency. With me? Not with me. With the children. And certainly I would do anything in my power to help. Even though they are not ours. Ours, Mr. Minister? Oh, oh I mean of our faith. Surely that would not be a consideration. Oh, no, no. But how can Portugal extend her protection to a ship without registry? more than 600 passengers with no legal papers. That is impossible. Tomorrow morning, those children will be sent back to unspeakable horrors, to their death. One hears those terrible stories. Almost impossible to believe. One feels so helpless. Here is an opportunity to do more than to wring our hands and shake our heads. Your Excellency, if there were the flimsiest legal pretext for my country intervening, believe me, we would. Do not despair. The good Lord will show us a way. Colonel Malione was so sorry that you and he weren't able to sit down together and talk this through face to face. He said... He said it was very difficult to explain the Vatican's position in a short note. He does it very well. A formal petition will be drafted and presented to the Germans. It will go through channels. In five or six months, the Vatican will receive a carefully worded reply. And where will those children be then? The Cardinal insisted on going to the airport with me. Wonderful man. The situation in Rome is very tense. I'm sure it is. Twice today, Tommaso. Twice today, I have been told to keep in my place. To stay in my chapel. To pretend I do not know what is happening on the outside. And now my dear brother in Christ writes of my dangerous zeal, counsels me to stay clear of excessive political involvement suggests I pray and put my trust in God. I do pray, Tommaso. I do put my trust in God. I do believe that is not all that God wants me to do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Lieutenant. Just uh, food and clothing? And some phonograph records. Ah. Photograph records to you? Yes, yes. They're with the supplies. 
Any news? Nothing. And with you. The American ambassador can't help us. The Red Cross representative is still trying. I have to meet him in half an hour. Isaac, we will find a way. Now I must see my friend. What do you mean you can't go? I would like you to fly out tonight as we planned. I will follow when I can. But I want you with me. I must not leave until a way has been found to save those children. Angelo, our brother is dying. I know. If we postpone going home, he could be dead before we get there. I want you to go, Maria. But it's your being with him now that could comfort him. Doesn't that mean anything to you? My heart cries out to be with Alfredo. Then go to him. I cannot. You'd stay away from your brother's deathbed because of some Jews? What kind of a man are you? Maria. The Jews are not your concern. Let the Jews look after the Jews. These two are my brothers. Oh, oh. all these years when... You should have been making a place for yourself in the church, in Rome, looking after your own. Where have you been? In Greece, in Bulgaria, in Turkey, wasting all those years looking after heathens, outsiders. No more. You've wasted yourself on people who hate you, hate the church. And what is your reward for 40 years of insults and humiliation? Nothing. It's all been for nothing. Maria. My reward for the past 40 years has been the past 40 years. Oh, Angelo mio, I'm sorry. I'm so worried for Alfredo, for you. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Forgive me. <laughs> There's nothing to forgive. Nothing to forgive. <laughs> sacrament of baptism is holy. Oh, I am tempted. I want to do this thing. I cannot. Angelo, I do not want you to violate your belief. But you will support us with the Turkish foreign ministry and the Portuguese embassy. You do not have to ask. Your Grace, we must hurry. Yes, Isaac, our time is running out. Go, go. Thank you. 
Dove Polanski, father, Judith Polanski, mother, Sarah Foxman Polanski, Miriam. Miriam. Last name? She doesn't know. Doesn't remember her parents. Excuse me. Why not Miriam Kohansky? Excellent. We'll give those assistance. Parents, Judith Kohansky, and Sarah Foxman Kohansky. Next, Ruben Sierke. Jewish children with 647 Catholic baptismal certificates. Forgive me, have you examined these documents? No, I have not. That's my department, Mr. Minister, and they look as valid as any I've ever issued. Your Excellency, Turkey is prepared to authorize an immediate transfer of the ship and its passengers to the protection of Portugal. Of course. You are relieved to shift the responsibility to us. Portugal is a Catholic country. What better documentation for a child's identity than a certificate of baptism? Mr. Minister, you told me your country wanted to help. We do, but this is all so unorthodox. I must contact Lisbon. There is no time. Then I just don't know. These children must be saved. This is their last chance. Now, we need your help. Excellency, I'm sorry. I just don't feel I have the right to make such a move on my own. Your Excellency, we are all taking a risk in this, but when you think of what's at stake... If I could only clear it with my superiors... Your Excellency... Our friend must do what he feels is right. Tommaso, you must not forget what you brought from Rome for the minister. As you requested. A medal of the Holy Family. Blessed by the Holy Father for your beautiful little girl. Lucy. May she always have the love and shelter every child deserves. the German government, I take possession of this ship and its cargo. Jack Herr Friedman. Yes. Good morning. Are you responsible for the safety and welfare of the children here? I am. Sailors planned, Your Grace. Right under that flag, the ship and its cargo have been surrendered by the Turkish government and are being returned to the homeland. The repossession order has been rescinded. We have been informed that the passengers on board are Portuguese citizens. Portuguese? That is correct, sir. Portugal has extended the protection and privileges of her citizenship to these Catholic children. 
<laughs> Catholic. I see. With what documentation, if I may ask? Their baptismal certificates. There are no such documents. These fugitives are Jews, 647 Jews. Portugal is satisfied that every child on this ship is a baptized Catholic. Those certificates are false. See them if you wish. Now, Archbishop, I think you know they're forgeries. If you wish to file such a charge, the Chancery will authorize a full investigation. However, with so many churches in Europe destroyed, priests dead or missing, such an investigation could take months, even years. This ship sails as planned. The Turkish army and navy have orders to stop you. Are you prepared to risk that confrontation? Put it back. Gentlemen, the Jews are yours. I hope they're worth the price you're going to pay. Human life is beyond price, Colonel Crow. Your Grace, we differ there. In one of many ways. I see. Friends. Friends. Joseph, I have to leave the ship. You understand? You want me to have your papa's watch? Must keep it always in memory of your papa. Goodbye, Joseph. God bless you. Shalom, Angelo. Shalom. story is true. He's quite a guy. The story is true. And he is quite a guy. Well, we'd better get back to the square. They'll be casting the next ballot soon. And I'm rooting for Run Kelly.
Shalom, Angelo. Angelo Roncalli became Pope John XXIII, the interim pope who in his all too brief reign initiated more changes than any of his predecessors in a thousand years. Open the windows, he shouted. Let in the fresh air. He will be remembered as the man who summoned the ecumenical council, the religious event of the century. The man who wrote the great encyclical, Possum in Terrace, Peace on Earth. The first encyclical ever addressed not just to Catholics, but to all men of goodwill. Perhaps Belgium's Cardinal Suenen said it best. He left men closer to God and the world a better place in which to live. the drop on me, Dan. But just don't crowd me, that's all. Fly low, little lady. Dan's abandoned. He's a hard man. But he ain't gonna harm no gal, not while old Nugget Clark's around. Get that gun out of my back, Dan. You're stealing the gold, and I can't say that I blame you. 
told the boys not to put the whole million in one coach, but just don't rile me, that's all. Just don't rile me. Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> an old timer. Well, I had to get to town. Had to get to El Dorado. Hey, wouldn't it be better if you and the coach here got to town together? Just saw a hold up, a kidnapping, and a horse stealing. Yeah? Busy day around here. Sure is. I fired at him, but it was out of range. Where'd all this happen? Beyond there. Well, there was there. I didn't hear any shooting. Well, you must be deep. Thanks for helping me stop my horses. No trouble at all. The railroad fella. The man that I said would be here today and everybody else said wouldn't be here for a week. Well, what about him? Well, I could see him plain, just like he was close up. Being gnawed on by a Gila monster ten feet high. Or <laughs> drowning in a lake of tiger milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, Wendy Nugget's off again. Well, of course, it was a long ways away. Clear from Junction Point Road down to the South Trail. But I got ding-dang sharp eyes, I have. Why, I could see plain the name of the railroad. You see it's the name plate on the buckboard, Nugget. Wall Reich or a Studebaker wagon? Well, it was. Uh, I'm going to talk to my boss. Joe, take care of the horses. I'm reporting to Mr. Stan. <laughs> well, it was. I wouldn't waste my wind on the likes of you. What's trouble, Nugget? Plenty of trouble. You should organize a posse. They took the railroad man. Took him? Yeah, pull down his team and haul him off me's buckboard. Oh, Nugget, why would they do that? Because them bandits don't want the railroad to come in here. They want to keep us living in misery and ignorance and working our heads off to feed their thieving bellies. They Shares, make Mr. Staten listen to me. Now, he's deputy. The last time he listened to you, he rode two nights without sleep. What'd he find? Well, that mirage would have fooled anybody. <laughs> this could be a mirage, you know. No, 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 I could see this plane, plain as an apple in a note bin. He was wearing a dark hat, a gray suit, driving a green buckboard behind a white and sorrel horse. You couldn't read the name in the lining of his coat, could you? Wire says it's Bob Manning. Bob Manning. Say something, mister? No, I'm just waiting to buy a bed. No hurry. He was there. After I saw all this, I drove hard for town. This here stranger kind of lost control of his horse and the speed of my passing. So I kind of stopped to help him catch his black horse. How about it, friend? Something like that happened. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Only it wasn't one horse, it was four. And they weren't yours, they were mine. They weren't on a saddle, they were hitched to a stagecoach. You see anything of this holdup, mister? Not a thing. One white horse, one sorrel, man wearing gray clothes, yellow buckboard, carrying surveying instruments. That right, Nugget? Yeah. 
And the buckboard was marked Mountain Western Railroad. Like that rig there. Huh? Like that rig there. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you are Mr. Statton, sir. I'm Bob Manning of MWRR. You got my wire? That I did, Mr. Manning. Welcome to El Dorado. This is Shears Williams, our tailor. I'm glad to know you. How you uh, do, sir? This is Mr. Uh, Mr. Rocky Lane, Mr. Manning. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Lane. And this is Dr. O'Neill. Oh, well, you'll be around town long enough to know us all. The unfeeling wolverines that get around here don't care nothing about a man's feelings, Mr. Manning. You all right? Well, of course I'm all right, though it's nice of you to ask. How'd you get away from them road agents? Road agents? Really, I'm afraid you've got me mixed up with someone else. Why, the last 20 miles coming into town, I never saw a soul. Now, hold on. Oh, except a stagecoach about a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> get around to your room in just a moment, Mr. Lane. This is kind of important to us. We've been so preyed upon by bandits that most of the people have moved away from here. Now we're finding out if we're going to have a railroad here to ship our cattle out and our money in with safety. And take your time, Mr. Statton. I'm kind of interested in this myself. Well, I might as well tell you right now, the news I bring isn't all good. The railroad isn't going through, El Dorado? Well, maybe so, maybe not. The truth is, it's appallingly expensive to bridge Powder River. Cost a hundred thousand, best estimate I could make. The company will put up half the money for the bridge, $50,000 but they expect El Dorado to put up the other half. In cash, within three days, in my hands. Oh. Hm. Well, I've got about 10,000 myself. Maybe among the people still left in town and the ranchers around. I got a little put away, Lucius. That's a ticket, Shears. You coming in, Mr... I'm afraid not. I'm just riding through. Wait a minute, Mr. Lane. I'll give you your key. I'll be back. The way I feel about this town, if we had the right kind of law and order, things would be a lot different here. Say, uh, where's this fellow live they call Nugget? He's got a shack a little way out in the East Road. Thank you. Dresses. Serve them darn good and right if I pulled out and let them town clowns stew in their own juice. The gal darn ding dang buzzards. Get out. <laughs> you're always around when I'm in trouble. Well, how's come you're always in trouble? Now, just... Well, I'd have been loose in a minute. Why didn't you go after that murderous buzzard? Who was it, you know? Wait and see who's buried tomorrow. Be a big funeral. I put six slugs into... Oh. Well, I'm mighty fast on the reload. Yeah. <laughs> You don't believe me, neither. I saw you laughing in town when I was telling them about the holdup out in the prairie. I wasn't laughing. No. No, you were telling the truth. I was? Sure I was. <laughs> a smart man has come to town at last. See, I, I got a little cabin up yonder, piece. Come on up and drink some coffee. All right. Just sit yourself down there while I make some coffee and get some liniment. Gun collector? No, sir. Every one of them firearms has got a history. Ah. Uh, 
thanks. Every time I finish a job, I retire the gun that I use. I've carried many a gun and many a police. And this one here, I'm going to retire when I've cleaned up the road agents and desperados that's made Powder River Valley a misery and a disgrace. And this has been bandit country for some time, huh? It sure has. And the railroad are coming through is going to put them out of business. That's why the aim's to get all the money that's left into one place, so that it'll make easy lifting. I never before heard of a railroad asking a town to help build a bridge. And I've worked for them for some time. A railroad marshal, huh? I get it. <laughs> you must be as smart as me. You knew that fellow in town was a lion all the time, and you kept your mouth shut. That's right. I happen to know Bob Manning. We worked together some years back. He had written me to meet him here in El Dorado. Uh, a friend of Manning's no friend of mine. Well, that wasn't Bob Manning that drove to the town. It wasn't. No, sir. Well, ride me through Alaska behind a team of bobcats. Come on, stranger. Where to? We're going into town to tell them giggling gravel heads to listen to me. To tell them that you know that that man's a fake. Oh, now, hold it. Bob Manning is a friend of mine. He may still be alive. If we expose this other man, he may be killed. Yeah, that's right. We're going into town, all right, but we're going to keep our mouths shut. Unnatural as it may seem to one of us. <laughs> Meaning me? Now, now listen, mister, you've got me all wrong, because I never tell nothing but the plain, unadulterated truth. Good morning. Good morning. Mind closing that door? Got a little job for you. This uh, lining's been bothering me for a week. Didn't think I'd find a tailor here. It's nice material. Made in New England. Pure wool. Lining's not bad. That team. What in the world are they thinking of? Using this fine cloth and trying to save money on thread. St. Louis Taylor. Yes, I got this... Of a man named Manning on the edge of town, I know. What? I'm Manning. We can drop all this, Mr. Devereux. Bull Makins works for me. Bull Makins? That's right. Stay back out of sight, you fool. Fool am I? Didn't I bring you a fine play actor? Ain't he a daisy? We don't need too good an actor. We'll be through here in a couple of days before anybody who knows him gets around. I understand there's a sheriff or two wanting to pluck him. Ancient history, my friend. The seer pages that record yesterday's doings crumble at the touch. Ha <laughs> ha, tomorrow's another day. Do you think this dump can raise $50,000? Close to it, including my savings. Ah. There's a larceny close to my sardonic heart. An elaborate web to steal one's own savings. And everybody else's. Anybody see through this lad, Bull? No, just that old windbag, Nugget. I'd have put it slug in him a little while ago if somebody hadn't come along. You leave Nugget alone. Didn't have him blabbing all over town that he saw me? Who believe him? He saw what happened when he talked. It's my head that's in the noose. It's me he saw. Bull. You're not forgetting who gives the orders around here, are you? No. But I'm the guy that uses a gun. You're getting too handy with that gun. You learned to keep it in your holster, so I tell you to use it. Hand me those shears. Now, if you want to use that weapon so bad, Bull, you can ride out to the Malapai tonight and and he's all Manning. You sure there wasn't a lady with Manning? Nary a sign of one. And I'd have known, because I got eyes like an eagle on you. I remember one time... Hold it, Nugget. the men and I'll do the engineering. It'll be like old times. Even if you don't want the job, 
Meet me in El Dorado to say hello to my new wife. The sweetest gal west of the Pecos. Signed, Bob Manning. I reckon you think a lot of this, Bob Manning. We built a lot of railroad together. to keep the telegraph operator busy. Well, now, I... Uh... Go ahead. <laughs> Corn fritters for lunch, I'll bet you. Yeah, I can smell them. You know, I knew a fellow once, a sort of a lumberjack, homesteader, cowboy, come to a mighty bad end from not liking them things. You see, he was cutting logs to build a house. And every day his wife would put a corn fritter in his lunch, which he hated. So the lumberjack would just throw it out, and an old coyote would come up and get it and eat it. You know, the fellow in Fort Dodge had a pup, was half coyote and half hound dog. And well, this one was pure D coyote. Well, he got to be mighty fond of corn fritters, cool ones. In fact, he got so fond of them that he just lay in wait. And when the lumberjack had so away the corn fritter, why, this coyote just up and catch it. Go ahead, I can hear you. They do get tame, don't they? Well, this one didn't get tame. He just got fond of corn fritters. In fact, he got so fond of them that it just pained him to learn that the lumberjack had cut about enough logs because his cabin was getting head high and ballroom long. And then what happened? Well, what do you think? The old lady put two and two together, and one night she took an axe... To the coyotes? No, to her husband. For throwing her corn fritters away. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I've got a message here for Mr. Manning. You want to give it to him, Nugget? I wouldn't give him my... Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take it to him. He's in the tailor shop. Yeah. This just came for you, Mr. Manning. Huh? Oh, thanks. You coming in on the bridge fund, Mr. Clark? Uh, I'm too old to be trusting my wages to just anyone. That near is chairman of the fund, Nugget. I'm vice chairman. We're keeping the money in the hotel safe with shears here on guard across the street. Hmm. This will require a bit of thought. Uh, I'll answer it later. Bull left, Jeff? Bull? Oh, Bull Makins, a fellow I hired to do some heavy work for me. Uh, I want him to get out my handbooks. What I know about Bull Makins, he's no man to handle your book work. Well, hardly, except. Well, books weigh a ton, and I'll need all I've got to answer this telegram from the railroad. I guess we'll have to postpone our fitting, Mr. Williams. Oh, we can postpone it all right. There's plenty of time later on. Don't worry about it. Be seeing yet. We didn't show him up. He was in there big as life and twice as ugly with Williams and Staten hanging on his every word. What'd he say? Just that he'd answer the telegram later. That's fine. That means Bob's alive. He's the only one who could answer that telegram. How come? What did you ask? I asked him what kind of ballast to use on a 3% grade over rocky country. Sure, sure. Nobody but Manning, the real Manning's ever surveyed that country. I get it. Rocky country, huh? That's right. I thought Bob ought to know I'm looking for him. All we got to do now is to watch that smooth-talking polecat, see where he goes, and there we'll be your friend. Where he goes and where he sends to. Did he mention any name? Yeah. A fellow by the name of Bull Macon, a sort of a town bully. He tried to pick on me once. Yeah, I... yeah. This Bull Macon's. Is he smart enough to be the kingpin behind all this? Smart? He ain't smart enough for nothing. Then he's got somebody behind him. We're going to keep our eye on this faker and Makins. It's their next move.
What are you following me for? Well, I had to come after you. Our friend got another telegram. His wife is on the Overland. I was to drive over and meet her at Junction Point. Mrs. Manning. Yeah, I figured you ought to know, so I pretended that I was sick so I wouldn't have to drive out. Staten is taking the stage out. That fellow will never dare let her get to town alive. Nugget, if you were going to hold up your stage, where would you do it? Well, now, let me see. Wouldn't it be where you slow down for the grade into Powder River Ford? Yeah, yeah, exactly the place. Well, let's go. All right, you know... How's he behaving? Friendly as a bear with a sore nose. Oh, now, Mr. Manning, hey, that ain't grateful. Got you three nice fellas here to talk to, and got your belly full of the best beef they could rustle, and still you ain't happy. Very funny. Sure. <laughs> got a little telegram here you might want to answer, too. Why? Just so we'll have some reason to keep you around, in case your railroad wires again. Here. That's a good reason. You don't want to live, do you? Get on your feet. The boys had picked you off anyway. What about the answer to that telegram? Okay. Just wire them that the living rock will do for ballast. It's on the level. Shears Williams can check the wire, and he's got education. It's on the level. It means use the rock that's fastened to the ground. Use the living rock for ballast, right? Right. Take care of them, boys. Your husband will certainly be glad to see you, Mrs. Manning. Don't try it, Mr. Staten. You're mighty polite for a bandit. You better get down. That's right, mister. Nugget, you taking full leave of your senses? Just in case. You too, lady. Would you step out, please? Just a minute now. Don't get excited, Mr. Staten. She won't be hurt. I'm not afraid. There isn't enough time to explain, but you two stay here with Nugget, and he'll tell you what there is to tell you. Young man, if you've fallen for one of Nugget's cock and bull stories... It's better if you listen to him once in a while. Mrs. Manning, I'm Rocky Lane. Oh, Bob told me about you. A railroad marshal to you. There's some people who might be aiming to kill Mrs. Manning. May I? Quaint resemblance. All right, is he? Nugget will explain.
You were certainly right. I can't believe it. You can't believe what? Your own eyes? Hasn't Nugget brought you up to date? Yes, but I can't imagine who's behind this. I'm going to arrest Bull Makins. Arrest Bull Makins and whoever is behind it will get himself another boy. Leave him free and he'll lead us to his boss sooner or later. Just what I was saying. Uh, Mrs. Manning, do you suppose you can manage Nugget's horse? Surely. He and Mr. Statton can run up the stage horses to get into town. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I'm going to bring her to your shack. And don't tell anybody she isn't dead. No, no, of course not. Now well, Nugget's gone and lost the stagecoach. What did you do with the coach? It wasn't me. They held up Mr. Statton and took the coach. They'd have taken the horses, too, if Nugget hadn't heard the shooting and come help me. Well, them horses know who feeds them twice a day. My wife. What happened to my wife? She was in the coach. The coach? But then... Failed after him as fast as we could. Found the horses loose and wheel marks are leading into the river. What manner of men do you call yourselves? My bride. My lovely, lovely bride. Oh, oh. now, come on. Right. <laughs> And I'll take it easy. Might not be as bad as it sounds. Ain't he good? He's beginning to think it was his wife. You didn't want Staten killed, did you? When he jumped No, it's good it happened this way. You know, Staten's a wonderful fundraiser. You'd think he was a two-headed calf he knew he was raising him for. He's doing very good, though. We'll be through here in a couple of days. You sure that gal's taken care of? Sure, look myself. That coach is in a pothole under 30 feet of water. And her hat blew off, too, when the boys are chasing him. Where have you been? Spying and prying. <laughs> You should have seen that fellow moaning and groaning over your untimely decease, lady. Why, you could pay a gold piece in San Francisco and not see no better. But, Bob, what about Bob? Got good news on that, too. The fellow what calls himself your husband sent an answer to our telegram. The answer said, use the living rock for ballast. Living rock for ballast. That means he's living and knows I'm here. Yeah, I was just about to explain that to you. But if Bob's alive, isn't there We haven't got him loose yet. Staten's the deputy here, isn't he? Yeah, and he's getting mighty uneasy about you and me and the lady here. I reckon you better get into town and make some pacifying words. That's what I aim to do. We could use a little help from the law. Yeah. That reminds me of a time when I was carrying the old shotgun down in Arizona. You know, there... Now, hold it, Nugget. <laughs> the nearest sheriff's in Hellman, isn't he? Yeah, that's the county seat. That black horse of yours will take you there and back in a day's ride. Well, that's fine. I'm going into town to have a talk with Staten. But what can we do? Just stay undercover. I'll see that she does, Rocky. This is terrible news, Mr. Lane, terrible. But it couldn't add up to anything else. I know. You convinced me. This is the final blow. Oh, so many of these people only came here because I talked them into believing in the future of this town and this fine valley. I can't help feeling responsible. All through the band of trouble, I kept saying, hang on, hang on. The railroad will come through and we'll have peace and law and order. So they hung on. Yeah, and got this. Oh, Mr. Lane, you shouldn't have kept it to yourself, letting me go ahead, raking the last dollars in the valley into my safe. I was buying life insurance for Bob Manning. As long as the money kept piling up, they wouldn't kill him. And now? Now the money's coming in too fast. Anything's apt to scare him into striking. How many men in this town can you count on? Oh, I'd like to say all of them. But actually, only one or two, I suppose. From what I hear, it'd take at least 20 to comb the canyons along the river. Can you operate this key? I'm a little rusty. Why? I'm right at the junction point. You wire the sheriff to meet me there with as many men as he can raise. And then what? He'll come for you. You're his deputy. Yeah, I suppose he will. But enough men for a searching party to leave the county stripped. And if the bandits decide to strike while I'm here alone with this money, I'm afraid I couldn't protect it. Take a look at my safe. I'd be afraid to get near it if I had a hack and cough. Mr. Lane. Rocky. Would you take the money with you? I'd feel much better about it if you did. Well, all right. Good. Here, be 
These will fit in your saddlebags. Sure they will. Now get that wire sent off. Tell them to meet me at Junction Point. I'll get right to it. thing is a plot. Manning isn't Manning. Ah, that's ridiculous. Why, the... I know all this for a fact. That cowboy, Rocky Lane. Oh, yes, him. I've noticed him hanging around town. Not liking it. Saddlebum, Lucius. Saddlebum. No, no. He's got a clear case against this Manning. There's a plot. They're going to rob my safe. Lane is a railroad marshal. He's on his way now to Junction Point to meet the sheriff. You're wiring the sheriff to send a posse out there? Hmm, I can't believe that. You and I are responsible for this money, Sheriff. And at my insistence, Rocky Lane took the money in his saddlebags. I trust your judgment, so go ahead. Oh, I wish we had time for you to hear his story. You're the vice chairman. Uh, you're the boss. Oh, don't I know it? Oh, I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant anything you decide to do. For all, everybody in Pato River Valley will know it was the best that could have been done, given the situation, given the tools. Thank you, Shears. Well, I better get this message off. started for Junction Point. Tell him to ride in like they're coming from the county seat to from the sheriff's office. They're to tell this lady they're going to cooperate with him. If cooperate means what I think it means. You've gone plumb loopy. When you get him away from Junction Point, you're on your own. But be sure and bring back those saddlebags. Get going. came running out with our money boxes. True. Let's go see if Lane got away with all the money. Well, Lucius might not be there. Something might be able to... The safe's empty, Shears, like a whiskey bottle on Sunday morning. We better send a posse after this rocky lane. We might get our money back. Only hope I'm not taking too much on myself, being vice chairman of this bridge fund, but well, Lucius here with deputy. About the only law we've had around here. I reckon you're deputy now. Staten thought a lot of you, Shears. I'll never be the man he was. Right on up. Seen anything of a cowboy named Rocky Lane? Speaking to you. The sheriff wired us to get right here. You'll meet us down the road. Good. Ready to go? Ready as I can be. Hold it, Lane. You mind telling me what this is? I'm arresting you for the murder of Lucius Staten. Staten? And for the robbing of his safe. 
When did all this happen? This ain't a lynching party or anything like that. This is a nice legal arrest, and we're taking you back to El Dorado for questioning. What proof have you got? Plenty. You were seen running out of the hotel. The safe was open and empty, and Lucius was found stabbed. Sounds bad, doesn't it? This ain't getting us any place, Lane. Well, I guess I better go into town with you and clear myself. Sure, sure. Maybe you won't have any trouble. Get your horse. See if something's stuck in it. What do you make of this? Seems to be wrong. That's funny, I don't see anything. town are going and done it now. They wouldn't believe you. About what? They wouldn't know the truth if it come to them painted on the side of a stagecoach full of Bibles. The only smart man, the only honest man that's ever come to town since they built the place. They're out hunting. Whom are they hunting? You? Me? What for? No. They're looking for Rocky Lane. Rocky? Got it into their fool heads that he's an outlaw. Why? Because he killed Staten and took all the money out of the safe. Oh, that's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Well, this town goes in for crazy things. Idiot. Where is Rocky? Well, nobody knows. Williams is deputizing everybody in town that can carry a gun to go out and get him. But he'll be killed. Somebody ought to tell Mr. Williams Rocky's honest. He's only doing this to protect me and Bob. I know, I know. I tried to tell him, wouldn't believe me. Said I was crazy. Said you was drowned and the fella in town was Manny. Well, he'll listen to me. No, no, wait a minute. Rocky said to stay here. Maybe if I went along with you, no, no, they'll believe you well, better if I'm not along. Well, I'm going. Rocky wouldn't be in any kind of trouble at all if he hadn't been trying to save Bob and me. All right, now be careful. Duck back into the shadows if you hear anybody and go straight to Williams. I will. So I told the boys to stake out for tonight. We'll find them when the sun comes up. You bungled this all along the line. I got the money back, didn't I, Shears? Mr. Williams, I might have to employ incompetent fools, but I don't have to offer my friendship. Magnificently said, old boy. And if I may say so, I don't at all like the idea of Manning being left with a single guard on him. Hey, Shears, Mr. Williams, you got any more use for this play actor? I don't know. If we can get our hands on Lane, we might get the folks around here to put some more money in the pot. And if they don't? Well, they'll never know that we recovered it. We'll be gone, Rocky Lane. Be a little short of $50,000. That means somebody gets no cut. That means you, actor. <laughs> well, you fellows are pleased to jest. Mm -hmm. Mighty fancy way of putting it, ain't it? Is Mr. Williams here? Hi, Mr. Williams. Come on in. Oh, thank goodness. I must see you. I want to talk to you. It's about Rocky Lane. I've got my boys combing every canyon for him. But you mustn't. He's innocent. Oh, how can you say that, lady? You were seen. I saw him myself running out the hotel door. You don't understand. I'm Louise Manning. Ah, my wife, my bride, my poor drowned dog. Shut up. There's something all wrong, lady. Mrs. Manning's dead. That was a trick of Rocky's. I guess this is the man here that says he's my husband, but he's an imposter. He's acting. Ah, magnificently. You got things all mixed up, little lady. 
I wouldn't trust this Rocky Lane too much if I were you. Take the advice of an old man and take her up to camp and keep her there. We'll hold Manning in line from here on out. Chase me from Arizona to North Dakota and back again. Sit down, Rocky, and have some coffee. It's gonna be all right. Yeah, everything's gonna be fine. Who's taking over the law in El Dorado? Shears Williams the Taylor. <laughs> but don't worry, I get everything fixed. Louise is going in town to tell him. I sent her. Of course, I'd have gone in myself, only them dumb jack... What's Louise gone in to tell who? That you ain't no outlaw. That you've been a-working to save her husband. That you couldn't have killed Staten. That's what she's telling Williams. Why Williams? Well, like I told you, Williams has taken over Staten's job. Why, well, he sent half the town out looking for you. And he also sent out Bull Makins. He sent... Rocky. Do you mean that I let that gal go into town? That's tum right. You couldn't help it. Oh, I could, too. I could have been born with some brains. Rocky, you stay here. No, you stay here. Be our undercover man. We need a good one. Someplace, friend? Why, uh, yes, I'm going to pack. Getting too rough for you? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Getting a little hot for play acting, isn't it? Ah, so you know me. Uh, what play did you catch me in? Keep that hand away from your pocket, Mr. Uh... Manning. You can drop that. Bob Manning is a friend of mine. I'm a railroad marshal. Oh. Uh, my name's Devereaux. Uh, how'd I do impersonating him? I only had a few minutes to study him, you know. The men who think they're big enough to steal something. Well, I'm quitting. I think they're going to kill me. Well, I'm on your side now. It's not that easy, Devereaux. I'll give you what protection I can, when I can, for a little information. Well, anything I know is at your disposal. For instance, she is Williams and Bull Makers. Where did they take Mrs. Manning? Well, to join her husband. Well, I've only been there once. Once is enough. Where did they take her? Well, it's, it's in the Malapai. That takes in a lot of territory. Where in the Malapai? Well, it's up one of the canyons. <laughs>
Louise. What happened? They've taken her up into the Malapai, where they're holding Bob. Where Bob's in the Malapai? That's like saying in the west of Missouri and east of California. Well, I think we can narrow that down a little. Will these things shoot? No, sir. When I retire a gun, I retire it. All them firing pins have been taken out. Why? We're going to take them out of retirement. And there's a couple of things for you to do. Sure, sure. What are they? Help rob a store. And tell the biggest lie of your life. No, no, no. Hey, wait a minute. Now, oh, a little robbery between friends, sure. But when it comes to lying, that's plain again my principles. Well, you're just going to have to offend your principles. Now, there isn't much time. It'll be daybreak by the time we get to town. Get your guns, turn out. Did you surround him, Nugget? Now, that ain't funny. He's wounded. He's killed two more men. I could have got him myself, but I ran out of bullets. Now, now, Nugget, tell us what you really saw. I'm telling you, he's wounded up in the Malapai, and one of the dead ones is Bull Mickens, and the other one is a fellow I saw out in the prairie, that railroad engineer, Mr. Uh, uh, Manning. Now, Nugget, this is one time we can really check up on you. Manning's dead, all right. Rocky Lane rode into town last night and killed him like he did old man Staten with a knife. Somebody crazy, and it ain't me. Well, everybody in town saw it. And there was a pretty gal. She's dead, too. Uh, you don't believe me, huh? No, nobody ever believes me. Not that old fool. I don't know. It doesn't seem natural for me not to stick to the plain, simple truth. You think maybe you're black-tonguing yourself, Nugget? Look. Duck in there. We sure cut out the sheep from the goats. Every no-good saddle tramp in town's a riding now. We'll give them a couple of minutes to start. You're right, Rocky. They're heading for the Malapai. And we're following them. It's our only chance to find the Mannings. Well, Megan's will be there. Maybe a couple more. Are we going to take them all by ourselves? <laughs> You're forgetting our posse. Come on. than I care for. Let's go to work. Of course, there ain't nothing wrong with shares. Mr. Williams, that's what you get for listening to that gabby old windbag. I don't know. He came awful close, calling it the Malapai. Good guess. Made another guess. Guessed you'd be found up here. Oh, Nugget, tell so many times. Found dead. What's the matter? I don't like that kind of guessing. 
He'd have broken my heart had he been right. All right, Bull, you can break camp. Huh? You heard me, break camp. You really mean it? I mean break it. Use that gun you're so fond of. Use dynamite, use anything. Drop that gun, Makins. All of you, freeze where you are. There's a dozen barrels pointing straight at you. Ready, Sheriff? Send them out two at a time, Lane. Swede here will tie them up. You'll cover Williams, Rocky. I got Bull Makins right in my sight. Let me plug one of them rascally critters, Sheriff. No, we gotta keep this Leo. How's this fit, Bob? Perfect. Drop your gun belt, Williams. You and Makins, up the hill. Here they come. Now the rest of you, up the hill, single file. My own clothes, stolen from my shop. Look at that, they're all dummies. down in that hollow there. Bob, pop up here. It'll be a pleasure. Nugget. God darn near hurt me. I thought this is my life story. <laughs> I've been right in my spare time. Every word is true. Snake. I I'll bet you my shot got him. You can have my share of the credit. Just when El Dorado is peaceful and worth living in, everything is booming prosperous like, then you up and move on. 
That's the kind of railroad people we are, Nugget. When the track's finished, we move on. I've got to do some surveying west of here. Me, I've got a job to do down south. I sure hope we get a chance to work together real soon, Bob. Ain't you even going to wait for the first trip of the Powder River Special? I would like to see the train. 